Hi there, my name's Lyle Todd and I promised a few of you fellas a, a tape on how to catch party grubs. Well now let's start with what we get them with. I use a speedo cable and on each end I've got a type of a corkscrew. Two different sizes because the holes vary when you get out there and you look and you'll notice that they're sharpened right on the point. We want them nice and sharp. And uh, the length of it too is uh, about four feet. But some of these grubs are down nearly that far. So the idea is that we're going to find a tree. The correct tree is a, is a gum tree that loses its bark. Sugar gums, yellow box is another good one. But they're gum trees, right? And they've got a, they, they're not a, a tree that, uh, like an iron bark or, um, or a, a red gum's another good tree. Red, red gum's a pretty good tree. But the way I like to get them, uh, I like to get them in the towns, like the recreation grounds uh, along the side of roads, especially where there's street lighting, because moths in particular love street lights or love lights. So you'll find that the tree that's the right tree that's near a light will have grubs around it, where the tree that's away from the light won't have as many grubs around it. Now, the tree I'm going to take you to, I've probably taken over 100 grubs from this same tree, but not a very big tree, uh, over probably three years. And I use the same tree all the time. I cover up where, I made, where I've been digging, uh, make sure that I put the soil back where I've been, and um, the, the grub, she comes back each... Well, so what happens is the, the, the caterpillar or the, or the body will turn into a, a moth, and um, she'll come up and she'll land in the tree, only lives a little while. She'll lay her eggs back down again where she come from. The little grubs will dig a little hole in the ground, go down and make the... until they come to the size that they're going to turn back into a moth again and do the same thing again. So. That's a Barty grub and a Wichity grub, same name, same thing. The uh, Carajong grubs or wood grubs, they're a different thing altogether. Uh, they live in timber, where um, these grubs live in the sand, in, in the ground. And these grubs eat the roots, Barty grubs eat the roots of the tree that they're living under. Uh, and that's why they get this uh, sort of a ready, early, when you put the hook in them, you'll see this juice come out of them. That's the most important part of a Barty grub is the juice. So wh when we go to keep them, I'll show you that we freeze them, but a lot of people freeze them, but they also they cook them before they freeze them. They call it blanching. Even for 30 seconds, it ruins the juice. The way I do it doesn't ruin the juice. So when you go to put your hook in, even after the grub's been frozen, you'll still have your juice, and therefore when you throw it in the water, the, the juice will flow down on the current, and any fish in the vicinity will pick it up on his nose and come looking for it. So we'll show you that at the end of the movie, but uh, let's go now and get some grubs. Okay, now this is the sort of tree we're going to be looking for. There's a street light just here, and this tree is a favourite tree for the moths because of that street light. Now, there's another tree there. It's it's all it's good too because it's close to the light. Um, but this, we're just in a street in the town that I live. I'll just walk out on the road a little bit and show you that these these gums are planted right up alongside this street, and they're all got grubs under them. So now. I'm going to show you what to look for when you come to a tree. Okay, now here's here's a tree that I just showed you up close, just so you can see the what they look like up close and what you're going to be looking for. This this tree's actually lost its bark um, recently, and it'll uh, it'll lose that bark again in about 12 months. But that's the sort of tree it is. Now, when you come to the tree, you'll see someone's left their rubbish behind. We start walking around the bottom of it and we start looking for things, signs that tell us there may be grubs under this tree. And um, just here, here we are, there's a piece there now. That's a piece of a grub. That grub has, has come to the surface and turned into a moth, and she's gone up this tree and laid her eggs. But that's what it is, it's just a, a very thin piece of shell, I'll show you how soft it is. Look, you can crunch it up like that. But that's uh, a telltale sign that there's grubs living under this tree. It's down there on a the shovel. I'll just get hold of it. I'll show you the shovel in a minute. You see that shovel there? That's a wide mouth shovel being cut. I cut the sides off it and make it that shape. It's a lot easier to use. So if you can get yourself an old wide mouth shovel, cut the sides off it to look like that, and you've got yourself the perfect shovel. Now, here's another piece of this uh, grub. That's what it looks like. I'll move into the light a little bit. Hopefully there. That's it. That's what it is. That tells you the barty grub live under this tree. Well, now getting back to the shovel again, the reason 
that's a shovel like this is because it's just the right angle for doing this, um, getting grubs. We don't get grubs by digging like this. No, we dig the garden. We actually get grubs by doing this. And we just keep, there we are, there's a grub hole there now. But there's a big spider just coming out of it, so we know straight away that there's no grub in it at the moment. So we just dig a little bit more. So you don't have to get mad, you just do it. Now there's a grub hole. Just come in closer please cameraman, right in close, keep coming close, even closer, right? This is the grub hole. Now, you listen to this sound that it makes. It's got a special sound that tells me there's a grub in this hole. It's got that hollow sound about it. Now, I'll just get my uh, grabber and I corkscrew. Right, we unravel it. We look at the size of the hole and say, yeah, well, maybe the largest one's going to fit down there. No, might be a bit tight. So we go to the smaller end. So we just put it down the hole, like so, like that, until it stops. It's stopped now. It's actually on the grub. It's actually touching the grub now. So what we do, there's another piece of them shells there. Look, that's another little bit. What we do now is we're touching the grub. We actually just a half a turn like that is all needed. Now slowly at the start we start to pull the grub up. We never rush this because you can pull that out of him and muck him right up. Now there's a perfect body grub coming out of that hole. So he's just pricked and that's all in the head. Okay that juice is important so we have a little container and put that there. Let his juice go in here. You'll see in a minute why I've saved the juice. Now a bit more on his hole. This hole, this grub, he makes a liner and lines his hole. It's not just a dirt-sided hole. This, this has got a liner all the way to the bottom that's made out of his saliva. And he gets his saliva from eating the roots on this tree, the little, the little roots. And he weaves it, makes it like that, all the way on his hole. And on the top of this hole, to seal it, he has a little dome top on it. If you could flick the dirt away, you'd see this perfectly little, little dome top and that keeps the water out. Until he's ready to turn into a moth, he'll change in the ground from a grub to a moth. He'll come to the surface, he'll open up. This is his actual grub shell. That's what he looked like when he was a grub. He'll, he'll open it up, the moth will come out of it. She'll fly up that tree, lay her eggs, and do this all over again. So now we'll do another bit of shoveling, and see if we can find another one for you. Um, let's just have a look at this hole. We'll just maybe we'll get a little stick. Just give it a little open. This will just clean it up a bit. Now this hole here, it looks okay. We'll just tap it and see what it sounds like. Hear that? That's a good hole. That's a bad hole. Different sound. That's dead. Now we'll put the screw down just to show you that there's nothing in it, but the grub has actually turned into a moth, gone up the tree, laid her eggs and there you go, nothing. So that's a good example on the sounds that are good holes. Now there's another one, here's another hole here. Now remembering that um, this tree has probably produced well over a hundred grubs for me, I look after it. I'll just cover up where I've been. We don't want the neighbours seeing what I've been doing because so they're going to come and uh, and do it too and we don't want that. So let's just see. This may not be any good. The, the screw hasn't gone down very far and that's probably the reason for that is that the hole's a bit tiny for the size of the screw. So that one stays there. She'll come up, seal that hole off again and then carry on her life. And then when she gets bigger, I'll come over and get her. Let's have a look. Here's another hole, just there. Now this hole's no good too. The cameraman comes right in, you'll hear nothing. Absolutely nothing. So it's useless. Saves you doing a lot of putting the screw down and not getting nothing. But now look at this one. Come right in cameraman, we'll just 
I've just taken the top off this hole. I just have to open it up a bit more. Right. There it is there. Now, listen. Let's just see. It doesn't sound good, but then it's got a nice lot of liner around it. Now, there you go. See, it only goes in that far. So that grubs fly on the coop too. Here. It's got a nice lot of material around it. There's another one here. Let's listen. Now bring that camera in close and listen. Hear that sound? That tells me there's one in there. Yeah, that one too. Both of them sound pretty good. In fact, there's a third one. Just there. We've just taken the top of it. Look at that. There's a third one. Let's just go gently. In this first hole over here, grub screw goes down, touches the grub on the head, half a turn, slowly bring him up, not fast. And there's your grub, okay, down the next hole, touch the grub on the head, or his bum, sometimes they're upside down, there he is, just turn it, half a turn into him, slowly start him off, bring him up, like that. And he didn't get him because he got off. So we go back down again. And we'll give him another turn in. And here he comes. There's number two. And then down this one. Down to touch him on the head. Which is about there. No further. Oh, this one's down a long way. There we are. We're on him now. Half a turn. Slowly start him. And here he comes. Okay, now that, that's how it's done. We'll go now and we'll show you what to do now we've got the grubs, what we're going to do with them. So there's four nice grubs. Now let's cover this over. We'll just bury these now, this, these holes, because we don't want other people seeing where we've been and what we've been doing. But if you find the right tree, keep your eye open for the trees that have got street lighting in them. You will, you will get grubs. You can get them down the river too, along the river bank, the big red gum trees. But generally, the campers are being filmed. And, gee whiz, there's not that many left. So, have a look around the footy ground at home or the showgrounds, up some of the side streets. Okay, now we're back home again. It's only a matter of a, well, to that tree, I suppose it takes a minute to walk from here. The grubs. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to put water in here. You can use tap water, that's no problem, but I just happen to like to use rainwater. I'll put them in water like that. Okay. A little container like this at the Chinese shop. Put about half a dozen grubs in it, about that much water, and freeze it. Just like that. And when you get... To you, when you're going fishing, you take these containers out, take them with you, and take half a dozen with you in the boat, or wherever you're going to fish. Leave the rest in your esky, keep them cold as possible. When they thaw out, they'll be just like this again. Mind you, you don't keep them for 30 years. They don't lose like, doesn't work like that. But that there, the juice that's in this grub, some of it's already gone out in this water. Now, we don't waste that water. What I like to do is, any grubs that I really damage bad, sometimes yabbies, put them in a wash blender, blend them all up, put them in a Coca-Cola bottle, take it down the river with you. This juicy is good too. Now you're going to fish in a certain spot above a snag. Throw your line in, put your grub on, throw your line in, and then dribble a bit of this water out of the Coca-Cola bottle, the burly, in the water there. It'll wander down into that snag, and a fish that's in there will pick up the smell of it and come looking. And truly, nine times out of ten, they'll find your grub. 